Hello, this is Miguel Bevia. Welcome to the full tutorial for this painting. In this video, I want to share with you some of my favorite tips and techniques for painting a realistic cat. Tips for painting cat fur, cat's eyes, and more. This full tutorial is broken up into four stages. The first stage is the drawing. The second stage is the first painting or blocking in. The third stage is the second painting, which is building up the layers wet into wet or a la prima. And stage four is the final touches and details. For this painting, I'll be using a very basic limited palette, which includes transparent red iron oxide, ultramarine blue, genuine Naples yellow, but you can also use cadmium yellow, and flake white hue, which is a little softer than titanium white, but you can also use titanium white. For my medium, I'm using a simple combination of walnut oil, but you can also use linseed oil and odorless mineral spirits. I pour them 50-50 into a palette cup, and then I stir the mixture thoroughly with a palette knife. The brushes I'm going to be using are made by Rosemary & Co. and these include a number 10 hog dome round bristle for painting the background area, two number zero chunking eggwork bristles which I'll use throughout the painting, a number two pointed round sable which I'll use for some final touches, and then lastly a number zero rigor sable which I'll use to paint the whiskers. So the first thing I like to do is to create a scale of tonal values using transparent red oxide and ultramarine blue. These two colors are on the opposite side of the color wheel and cancel each other out, creating a rich transparent neutral dark. And adding white creates very neutral grays, which can either shift warmer or cooler, depending on how much red or blue you add. I'm going to be using a number zero Eckbert bristle brush to draw the cat, using a middle tone value and a little bit of my medium mixture to make the paint more fluid. The first thing I want to do is to establish where the cat will be positioned on my canvas, and I'm going to do this by marking the top and bottom of the cat's head. Then I will place two marks for the sides of the head. Cat's heads are usually wider than they are taller, so I measure the height and width to make sure I have the right proportions. Then I draw a horizontal line to mark the top of the head and two vertical lines for the sides of the head. Now I'm going to make a vertical center line that runs from the top of the head down between the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And I will make a horizontal line, and this is where the cat's eye ducts meet. I'll also divide the head in equal thirds. This is where the cat's ears will go. This measurement will also give me an approximation for the space between the eyes. I'll then mark the cat's eye ducts touching the horizontal center line, and draw the upper eyelids of the cat's eyes. After I draw the eyes, I'll find the center of the bottom half, and just above that, I'll put an indication for the top of the nose. Then I'll draw a down-pointing triangle to represent the nose. And just below the bottom of the nose, I'll put an indication for the mouth. Then I'll draw the bottom eyelids for the eyes. and move on to the muscle of the cat, chin, and connect the jaw to the sides of the head. Now I'll draw two slanted lines for the base of the ears, and place the cat's ears using the measurements I did earlier. I 
I then draw the body of the cat. I'll make some final marks for the side planes of the head and the tabby cat stripes. And lastly, I'll draw two vertical lines in the center of the eyes to indicate the pupils of the cat. And here I have a very basic drawing of a cat. Once I'm done with the drawing, I'm going to start the first painting, which is also known as the color blocking end stage, or first pass. So the main purpose of the blocking end stage is to lay down your general colors without getting into too much detail. This will help you refine your drawing and start searching for value relationships and color harmony. I'm going to be working wet into wet or a la prima for the entire process. So the first painting, I'm going to apply the paint thinly and I will use thicker paint in my second pass. Another thing to mention is that applying thin paint as you block in the painting allows you to easily make changes and corrections. Since the initial layers of paint are thin and translucent, it's easy to make adjustments. Then, as you feel more confident with your values and colors, you can apply thicker paint and build up the layers in the second pass. So now I'm just laying down some general tones with thin paint and I'm just starting to search for colors and values. I then apply a slightly darker tone for the body of the cat. Again, I'm thinly scrubbing in the paint and brushing in the paint in the direction in which the hairs grow. I'm now going to address the background using my number 10 Hawk Dome Round Bristle. I'm going to mix a cool gray tone using white, ultramarine blue, and a little transparent red oxide to neutralize the color. This cool neutral gray tone will harmonize well with the warm colors of the tabby cat. I'm keeping the background very simple. I scrub in the paint very loosely, leaving some brush marks to make the background more random and interesting. I start introducing darker tones to mark the cat's eyelids. I apply lighter and slightly more chromatic orange tones to the fur. For this, I added more white to my value scale, transparent red oxide, and Naples yellow light. So as I continue with the blocking end stage, I'm just searching for colors and value relationships in the fur. And I'm loosely blocking in the painting, but I'm still thinking about the cat's fur. So for each stroke I make with the brush, I'm paying close attention to the direction and length of the cat's hair. So I keep my brush strokes short and going in the direction in which they grow. Although this is the blocking in stage, I usually like to finish the eyes early on in the painting, so I'm going to focus and finish the eyes now. I use a warm base color for the eyes, so that when I add the cooler tones of the iris, this warm underpainting will show through some areas and will give the eyes some vibrancy. One of the darkest values in the cat is around the eyes, so I'm going to outline the eyes with a rich dark warm tone, and then place the pupils with the same rich warm tone. Now I'm going to mix a cool green for the color of the iris, using Naples yellow, ultramarine blue, and a little transparent red oxide to neutralize the green. I applied the paint in simple strokes, letting some of that warm undertone show through some gaps.
The bottom part of the iris is catching more light, so I'm going to lighten my valley with Naples yellow light, white, and a little touch of transparent red oxide. And I'm being careful to leave a gap near the pupil so the warm undertone underpainting shows through. For the pupils, I use my darkest valley with a cooler temperature meaning I have more ultramarine blue than transparent red oxide in my dark mixture. And lastly for the eyes, using my number 2 pointed round sable, I will add highlights with pure white. I continue with the blocking end stage and place the tabby cat stripes. I always use warmer tones in the first painting, so my dark mixture has more transparent red oxide than ultramarine blue. And then in my second painting, I will add darker cooler tones over these warm tones. This just gives a nice effect to the painting. Now I'm going to start painting the nose, and for this I'm going to be using a warm brown of transparent red oxide and ultramarine blue with a little white. I keep laying down some tones and brushing in the direction in which the hair grows. Using a limited palette helps me simplify my choices when painting. If the tone I need needs to be warmer, I can add more transparent red oxide or yellow. If I need a cooler tone, I can add more ultramarine blue or white. So now, I'm going to move into the muzzle area of the cat, and for this, I'm just going to use the background cool color, which is white, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of transparent red oxide. Since the hair in the muscle area is white, and white is the most neutral color, meaning it has no color of its own, it's very influenced by the environment in which it's in. So the surrounding cool gray colors of the background are bouncing off and tinging these white hairs with this cool gray color. This is also known as ambient light, and it's a beautiful way to add harmony to your paintings. For the ears, I thinly scrub a warm tone, so when I add lighter colors over this, the paint won't overblend with this initial layer. Here I am using the background color to carve out and refine the shape of the cat's ears, head, and body.
With the first painting or blocking end stage finished, I'm now ready to move on into my second painting. In this stage, I'll be using thicker paint and I'll work wet into wet to create soft transitions and painterly effects for the cat's fur. So during the blocking end stage, I toned down my values on purpose and now in the second painting, I'm going to start to increase my tonal values and build up the lights progressively and I will save my lightest values for last. So now I'm going to start adding all the finer details using the wet into wet technique and I will blend my colors to create soft transitions and help create the illusion of fur. To create soft hairs, I am just touching the end of the brush to the painting surface and dragging the paint through the wet underlayers. I've also been saving my darkest values for this stage and this is my opportunity to create more depth in the tabby cat stripes and shadow areas. I paint in the tabby cat stripes with darker tonal values, blending wet into wet to create the soft fur. And I am paying close attention to the direction and length of these hairs. I lightly drag and lift the brush from the painting surface and add these stripes. The fur can be painted by dragging the bristle brush through the wet paint and into the background layer. This makes a beautiful feathery effect. Using ultramarine blue and transparent red oxide, I continue to add more depth in the shadow areas of the fur with warm dark transparent paint. I'm also making longer brush strokes here because the fur in the body is longer than in the head area. Using the wet into wet technique, I blend cooler halftones with my darker shadows to create soft transitions and realistic looking fur. I'm trying to avoid painting individual hairs, rather I'm identifying clumps of hair and painting them as one mass, and then I can separate these masses with darker or lighter tones. I soften and blend my edges, checking my tones working wet into wet. Using the edge of my bristle brush, I feather out individual hairs. I can refine the fur by just touching the end of the brush to the layers of wet paint, and drag various colors and tonal values through creating the illusion of fur. Now I'm going to add some highlights to the muscle area of the cat, and because the bright light overpowers ambient light, I'm not going to use the cool background color. I'm going to choose the colors of the direct light, which in this case is a warm white light. So here I am using white with just a little bit of napless yellow and a bit of transparent red oxide to warm up the white.
So now when it comes to finishing up the fur, this is where I save my lightest lights until the very end. Because I've been compressing my values throughout the painting process and saving my highlights for the very end, it allows these highlight marks for the hairs to register. I continue to deepen the shadows and add more depth to the fur. I soften and blur some edges with my brush strokes to create the illusion of soft fur. I use my bristle brush and drag through the wet paint to give the indication of fur catching the light. During the last stage of the painting, I take a break for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or longer. Later, with a fresh perspective, I look to see if I need to add or change anything during this stage. Like the little brown dots in the muscle of the cat. Here I'm adding more details to the nose and blending the edges to create soft transitions. I don't like to make my paintings very detailed, but I do want them to have that finished look to them. So I sharpen some edges around the cat's ears and redraw some of the areas.
And lastly, with the regular brush, I paint the whiskers of the cat. For the color of these whiskers, I mixed a lot of white with Naples yellow and a little bit of a transparent red oxide. And with these final whiskers, this tabby cat painting is finished. I really hope this video tutorial was helpful. Thank you for watching.